sure you all know that awful feeling when you spend hours scripting a system and then for some quote unquote random reason your script doesn't work anymore and you're like damn why doesn't my code work no more but don't worry bro at least we got the output to see where we went wrong Oh nah. Alright, having your scripts not working is something, but having it not work and no errors in the output can be even scary for some people. And I should know because to this day, I still get a little bit scared when I'm struggling to find errors. Like bro, you don't understand. I used to crash out when I wasn't able to find errors in my code. And I would scream at whoever I was talking to. It was so bad. But I got better over time. Lucky for us, there's a technique you can actually use to speed up the process of finding errors in your code, even when there's no errors showing up in the output. So I'm gonna need you to lock and pay attention for this one because in this video you're going to learn First of all, we need to understand what debugging is. According to an article made by Matt Huser, principal consultant at Excellent Development, debugging is a multi- Okay, I am reading all that. Simply put, debugging is just the process of finding bugs, but the technique we use for it is what you'll be learning in this video. I know it might sound kinda complex for some, but trust me bro, it's really easy. All you really need is just one thing, and that is, drum rolls please, print. Yeah, all you need is prints. But wait, hold on, I'm telling you, baby scripters be sleeping on prints, bro. Prints are useful as hell. I'll show you why in a bit when we get into studio. If it wasn't for prints, bro, I'm telling you right now, coding would be at least 10 times harder. 90% of baby scripters don't get this right. So if you're new to scripting, this is going to be very useful. Okay, so how do we use prints to find errors? Well, before that, I need you to understand something. If your code doesn't work and it doesn't show any errors in the output, then chances are that the logic you use to build the code is flawed. The oh output gives you syntax errors and errors related to features of the engine and all that but when it comes to stuff from the logic of your code the output won't really show it in most cases so we need to find a way to find where exactly we make the logic mistake and that's where printing comes in Let's go to studio. I'm gonna make you learn this with a kill rig script I made. And I know what you and many others will say. A kill rig is too simple. Everybody knows how to do a kill rig. Shut your stupid- Shut up, bro. You'll grasp the concept anyway. We got our red part here and we made our script inside the part here. I get the part. I use the touched event with the part. I get the humanoid. And if it gets the humanoid, then it kills the player. In theory, I got it all right. But when I go in game and test it, it doesn't work. And it doesn't throw any errors in the output either. I'm touching the part but it doesn't destroy my character. As I said, chances are you got a logic error in your code and we wanna find where the error is. So let's go back to our script. In case you hadn't noticed, the mistake is made right here on line five. It's supposed to be touched up parent colon find first child humanoid, but instead we got touched colon find first child humanoid. This is a very easy mistake to spot, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna pretend that we don't know that. I promise it'll still be helpful. Let's go ahead and start step one. So essentially we wanna use prints to know how far the script runs or to find out what parts of the script are running. So you wanna place prints after and before any important lines. Important lines in your code will essentially be each time you use an event, function, if statement, loop, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Make sure every print is different so that you can know what print is which. You can number them or you can name them whatever you want. For the sake of this example, I'll just number them in ascending order. I added one before we used the touch event, one before the if statement, one right after we enter the if statement, and one after the if statement has passed. We go ahead and test again and we get one, we get some twos, we get some threes, and we get some fives. But note how we don't get any fours. You need to keep that in mind because that's what we're gonna use to spot where the error might be. All right, so we go back to the code. We know that one prints two prints three prints and five prints the only one that we don't actually see is four since we got threes and fives this lets us know that the error is between these two lines between lines three and five which means that the condition for it to go inside the if statement is not met that's how you would know where the error lies and once you know where the error lies then you'd focus on how to get the code to actually go inside the if statement in this example it's an if statement but it could be whatever it could be a function event loop whatever and once you find where the error is then you'd have to find out why is it that the condition for that part of the code to run is not met and obviously there's some million and one different reasons on why it might not be running because a condition can be whatever so it's really gonna depend on what you're trying to code so you'd go hmm why is it that it's not going inside the if statement perhaps the condition is not met what's the condition oh the condition is for it to find the humanoid where do 
I have the humanoid? Oh, I have it inside this variable. Let me see how I get the humanoid. And once you're there, you go, oh, I got the humanoid the wrong way. I should have typed touch.parent instead of just touched. Let me fix that. All right, let's try the script again. And boom, now it works. Obviously, as I said before, the mistake here is very apparent. Like most people will be able to spot this just by glancing at the code. But I kid you not, you can literally use the same quote unquote technique or like the same principle to find errors in more complex code. That's how most people go about it. That's how I go about it. Just use prints to know if a certain portion of your code runs. Eventually, once you narrow it down enough, you're going to have an idea of where the error is. And once you spot the issue, then and only then will you be able to actually start trying out different stuff to fix the actual mistake that you made. Especially in large your frameworks, larger scripts, that's something that you will have to do because if you don't, you will just find yourself having to look at every single script, every single line individually, which can work, but that's just exhausting. Let's be real here. And lastly, we have a Discord server. So if you're interested in meeting other cool devs or just asking for help, then you know what to do. I'm often active in there, so you might catch me in there if you actually decide to join. Also, real quick before I end the video, for those of you that actually care, I mean, if you made it till the end of the video, you're actually a real one. But I know that I haven't uploaded in almost a month. Um, I apologize for that. I know that a lot of you are waiting every Friday for a new upload and i really appreciate that trust me i really do but at the moment i'm kind of trying to release a project with some very cool people i might actually be able to speak on it on a couple of weeks when i have actually something to show you or when testing opens hopefully that goes well and yeah thank you for watching the video this said keep leveling up bro be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace